but I mean, if we're going to crash and burn, might as well crash and burn live. Yeah. So it'll like be entertaining for a few. Yeah. I mean, then you have visual proof, right? Um, and, and that we went down in flames. In oh, flames. well, hello there. Welcome, hello. everybody. Welcome back. Welcome. Welcome back to the best of our week. Uh, what is today? What is today? Is the 21st? Twenty first? Twenty? Yes, twenty first. I am dead. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, you I'm really someone got a little too into four twenty, and they couldn't remember that it was the twenty first. <laughs> I, you know what I mean. You get stuck at four twenty. You never want to get out. Uh, you know, well, Molly That's always have, has some uh, some fun stuff to talk about. But uh, <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Best of Our Week. This is episode 66. Uh, we are uh, here back in our own perspective studios. Obviously, yeah. we're not together. Um, you know, Juan had a nice, long family time, you know, trip. I, I did my thing the week before, so we're kind of taking turns. And then we're back. Um, and I see a few of our friends are in the chat already. We have, we have Farhan, uh, Barry Johnson's in there. Some guy named Juan Bagnell commented. I don't know who he is. Um, Michael Corrigan. And then uh, Technol is in there as well. And in on uh, Proton. Howdy, folks. Um, it's been an interesting week. It's been an interesting week. We uh, I, Juan and I were talking. And we're like, there's a good part of our week that we can't really kind of talk about much. I mean, you'll hear yeah. about it at some point. It's cool that stuff. Uh, it is. But... It is. It is. Um, but yeah. You know, so... embargoes. They're, they're <laughs> Embargo. pretty cool. Yay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, there was a few things going on too. Obviously, we we did. Yeah. We both did get a chance to push out some videos. Um, not a lot of videos for me this week, unfortunately. Me neither. Uh, been, yeah. Been really, like, day job's been solidly i, I kind of made myself time. sick getting a, as many videos cut from last week to the beginning of this week that i did and uh, then i we, we were on the road you 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 know, like from the week before you being yep. in a hotel room to me being in a hotel room um i really needed to take a couple days just to kind of it's a lot of get it's a back lot of things to normal to do, yeah. and recover yeah well and but you guys also did like really long like you're, you have a very long commute which to me, my hat's off to you. I mean, that is a, that's an adventure. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, I love desert driving, but it's still like when we go to visit family in New Mexico, that's 14 hours in the car for the active commuting part. Yeah. yeah. So uh, when we try to make it just a weekender like that, it, man, it kind of bleeds over a, a, a two days, two days of visiting is, is almost three or four days in the car. If you really <laughs> and, try and to a couple of days to recoup ourselves. from. Oh, yeah. no, absolutely. Absolutely. But, uh, but, it, but it was great because, you know, like, again, it's it's just like I'm sure you were you were testing out phones and cameras and stuff yeah. um, uh, for for your for your trek. Uh, same thing for us. Like uh, th this uh, this last weekend for me was all about ready for and mm -hmm. was all about the one plus 10 pro and putting those two phones side by side was really instructive. Like you'd run into a limit with one phone and then the other phone would fill in those gaps. And it's like. Yep. I still am so far. It's like I'm so tantalizingly close, but I'm so far from getting my one catch-all unicorn device that really could handle everything. Like, I genuinely wouldn't have been able to get the weekend done the way I did mm -hmm. if I'd Those... only had one phone. <laughs> <laughs> like, I had to have both. Uh... So my solution to everybody who watches <laughs> or listens to our show, just buy all the phones. <laughs> So you can cover all your bases. That's the only real answer. And and have some type of a sling with all your phones in it. And every time you need something, just pull it out. Uh, like like a those... bandolier of, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. of smartphones and just pull yeah, one like out. One of those moment uh, the pouches. I would say get the six liter <laughs> pouch. Yeah. It's so bad. But again, uh, it, it, I mean, I love those opportunities, especially because we've been so so sort of locked up over the last two years that just yeah. starting to take a couple of those those small treks uh, out to, to go visit family, it gives you a different perspective on using the gadget. Mm -hmm. I, I really feel like for the last two years, we haven't really been particularly impressed with smartphone tech because we're not showing our phones off to other people. We're not relying them on them out and about. You know, we're mm -hmm. more relying on home computing solutions. Yeah. That's why I think laptops have gotten the surge that they've gotten over the last two years is because they're a good balance of home computing and portable computing. But as we start venturing out again, like, it's really incredible. The versatility and the power of a smartphone from 
to, I don't know, from 2020 to now mm -hmm. is, is pretty remarkable. And, and if you're not trying to do more with the phone, um, I think you're, you're kind of missing out if you're, if you're buying at this tier, obviously I'm talking about OnePlus 10 pro and Moto edge plus these are expensive devices. Oh yeah. Um, but if you're not using that, that power, it is so easy to trek down to like Poco level, save a grip of cash and still have an absolutely brilliant phone experience. I'm, I'm actually playing around the, um, the a 53 at this point. Hold it hey, up. Look if, at that. Oh, come on, Sony. Sony. <laughs> Okay, Sony doesn't like Samsung. I don't know why. Like it did before, it. like really well. Hold on, let's try it one more time. Come on, Sony. Ah, oh, come for the love of God. Yeah, this whole. Um... <laughs> That's the closest I think you've come to like just legit swearing on our. I mean, podcast. like oh fiddlesticks. Ah, <laughs> fudge. Uh, you know, <laughs> suffering succotash. That's yeah, that's where I was gonna go. Suffering, suffering. succotash. Yeah, suffering suck. <laughs> I do resemble that comment. I mean, I don't have the lateral lisp, but I do have a bit of a stutter, so I always get a kick out of those old Looney Tunes. <laughs> suffering suck attack. Now, okay, let's see. Is it going to work? Is it? Uh, no, it is just not working. It really doesn't want to. Okay, okay. Well, and of uh, course, but so anyway, we, don't worry about I, I think it. Don't we kind of know what an Oh, now I'm out of focus. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think we kind of know what an A53 looks like. Yeah. I, I would like to, to jump into a conversation with you because I have had ruthlessly savage things to say about Samsung in their entry-level premium tier. Yeah. I think the Galaxy S22 is hot garbage that most people should stay away from unless they get a ridiculous give-me-money-to-take-the-phone kind of deal. My advice for all of the people that sit there and squawk about this is a phone for average consumers mm -hmm. is to point people to Galaxy A. And I feel like the Galaxy A52 was oh, a yes. really strong example of that. But now that you've been spending some time with the Galaxy A53, do you think Samsung is continuing that track record of A53 being a good price performance solution for the Samsung faithful? Right now, uh, with everything I'm getting from it, uh, there are. So my initial goal was essentially trying to see: is the S22 a better value for the money than an A53, or is the A53 truly a much better experience uh, for for the? I, I would say for the for the core experience, um, mm -hmm. the A53 for me with the fact. So I'll take a step. Obviously, the headphone jack, the lack of the headphone jack, is is a bummer. That's one thing, and I think yeah, Samsung recognizes that. Uh, but take that apart, uh, well, not about take that away, and then look at what we get with the phone. We get a larger display than the S22. Uh, we get a uh, basically a triple camera setup on the back. We have obviously you know a similar uh, same similar charging technology since the uh, S22 does not have fast charging. It's that's it's a weird conversation, but it is. Um, both of them offer a unique experience, and I feel like the S the S22 only wins with a specific subset. And what I'm talking about is basically decks. If you really need decks, that's something that only comes with there. Or if you need screen mirroring, sure. uh, uh, the A53 has some very tailored experience, but I feel like for the price point, it's still a much better value. The S22's placement, the existence of the S22 is to make you want the S22 Plus or the S22 Ultra. It's not there <laughs> to sell you. No, 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 no. I got all these comments from people who aren't going to buy the phone uh, telling me that there's a, a definite market need for the S22 with power users who don't no. care about top tier performance, <laughs> battery life, and, and, and want the smallest form factor phone that can't do things that the Note 22 can do. That's I, a real market demographic. It, it's I, for reals that people really buy phones like that. Power users that want a small form that doesn't have the features of the power phone. Yeah, no, absolutely. And no battery and, life. And, yeah. And no battery. And, and for that, that's a for real, that that's a real group, consumer right there, according to my YouTube comments. Yeah, and 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 I think definitely, yeah. Uh, for that, the twenty two, is is a is a very much spot on, spot on recommendation. <laughs> uh, and I think we should just end the the show on this point. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back next week, where for we sure. talk about Samsung. Um, I think where where I was surprised is with the camera experience. Um, I, mm -hmm. I will say the S twenty two. So the shutter lag is a little bit more pronounced on the A fifty three, and I think that has to do with the Exynos yeah. processor this year. So there is a little bit of a like Samsung this year, for some reason, it's almost like they purposely 
you know, they're they're messing around with the recipe that the A52 had. And I think the processor and the lack of the headphone jack are, are going to change the experience. I still would say A52 is a better buy. And well, the Samsung even kind of admits that. I mean, if you look at the pricing yeah. on Samsung's <laughs> site, the A52 is still a more expensive phone than the A53. Yeah, no, no, it, it makes sense because they know they know that that phone is actually actually a truly value for the money because you're getting a better processor even though it's a year earlier you're getting a headphone jack you still you still have the uh, expandable storage which i, I have, do have mm -hmm. to say it is nice to see that there are samsung phones out there and this is kind of a weird one that have right. expandable storage do you remember that samsung i mean it it's not just on tablets it's on phones now no 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 no. i saw i saw uh youtubers with really huge youtube channels say that it's it's not worth it anymore it's okay if samsung gets rid of features now now it's okay that samsung now it's is okay. getting rid of yeah because it's giving you a better experience at the end of the day right for sure I, you, but you're getting such a much more powerful phone that samsung throttles it for you and you don't need expandable storage that I, that was i believe their main argument and I, and I think, so to, to kind of summarize it, from what I've seen so far, <laughs> the A53 truly is, I feel like a better buy than the S22. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, with the exception of a few things, not specifically to performance, but it's more specific to DeX. If you want the yeah. DeX experience right now, unfortunately is it's purely an S series and a Note series, but or the now the Note is an S. Um, a series, unfortunately, do not have that. And they also don't support screen mirroring. So you can't even mirror your display out unless you're casting it. So yeah. that's so it gets a little bit like they truly make it so that you know the difference between the two. Uh, but Which I still prefer it. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it, it makes no, I mean, at least screen mirroring, I, I would have imagined that should have been there. Like why take that away kind of a thing? Well, I was trying to remember, I really felt like, I think the only A series that I remember explicitly having video out through USB um, what was that A90? Oh, because uh, the yeah, A50, the, the, the A70 didn't even mm -hmm. have it. Remember the velvet went toe to toe against, I think it was the A71 or A72. Mm -hmm. I think I've got yeah. my timelines jumbled in my brain, but as far as I know, the only, uh, of the last two years, the only purpose built mid ranger that supported USB three video out, had a desktop mode was the LG velvet. Yeah. And, um, you know, I know a lot of people panned it, but th there's no reason why you can't run a desktop mode off of a mid-tier SOC like oh, a Snapdragon 765. Absolutely, it is, absolutely. It's, it's a brilliant experience. You just need to optimize a little differently for it. And obviously, you can't do some of the same heavy lifting that you would expect to do on DeX on a Note 22. But to the same token, you also can't do it on, on an S22 because the S22 is going to throttle you like crazy. And if you're really doing heavy work, it's going to be just as slow or just as fast as a Pixel 5 with yep. a Snapdragon 765. So I, I, it's, a, it's kind of a bummer that I feel like Samsung has drawn that artificial line in the sand. And it's, it's exactly in that A series that I would have hoped to have seen stylus support, that I would have yep. hoped to have seen DeX, any of these other features that deliver more value to consumers we're not getting. So if you're going to make me treat a phone just as a phone, um, the S22 is is so grotesquely overpriced. It, it's not even funny anymore. We're going to keep making jokes because I actually do think it's kind of funny. But <laughs> that is such a huge ask of consumers. You might as well step down to like an A53. Mm -hmm. I just think it's sad. There are so many of those phones at that A53 tier that genuinely could be doing more for consumers if I think consumers understood compute power and features and connectors and things. Yeah, no, I mean, speaking of com uh, competitors in that market, uh, OnePlus announced the uh, the the new Nord, right? They looks, they finally it looks like good. A, it I like a whole bunch of people said that it looks like an iPhone, so like realistically, the design has some <laughs> heavy inspiration from an iPhone but, SE yeah, circa guess, or iPhone sure. uh, iPhone 5, you know, circa 2025, <laughs> I don't know. Um, the design obviously is they're trying to be unique. They're trying to have some similarities, but um, yeah, something like that on T-Mobile right now would be something that, you know, is something you can consider uh, even just looking at the fact that Nord has been killing it the last couple of years. Yeah. So you have a couple, you not only, I mean, we obviously only have one right now. I, I'm, I'm expecting another edition, like the N10, or is it the N10 or the N the 100, right? Because they had the N10 last year, the N100, 
And this yeah. is the N20, so they should be another... N200? N N200 but or something? I thought there yeah. was a flavor of that that was regional, but again... It would there's be, the um, CE, there's the Nord CE. The, that's, I think, that's what I was Yeah, thinking. so I think yeah. ESA, ESA pushed the video out on that, I think if I'm not mistaken, but I think it's not in the in the US. It looks like it's just a T-Mobile variant. There's only one that, at least from the announcement, and I think I also saw Des on, on Twitter talking about it. Um, 695 processor, uh, you know, I think is it six gigs of RAM, 128 with an SD card. Yeah. Um, I think a primary 64 gig, uh, 64 gig, 64 megapixel camera. Uh, it, it's just it's a Nord, right? So it's trying to hit that yeah. sweet spot of price to performance. And the 695 is actually quite capable. We saw it, I think, together on um, the Redmi Note 11s, right? I think uh, yes. the 11 Pro or the 11S, I think. I, yeah, we, they're we solid. Saw I mean, yeah, yeah, they're you, solid. You, you, we still have that kind of weird division where you take a, a small step back in GPU compute. So they're a little less good for some of the the games we might like to play. Oh, definitely. Um, but it, it's still, I mean, I got to say, I, I really was kind of impressed with um, the TCL, with mm -hmm. that Snapdragon 480. Because it's the 400 series, I would normally say, hey, avoid like the plague. But mm -hmm. it's kind of a totally reasonable daily communicator. Like, if you're genuinely just covering communication and you occasionally stream a little video or something, yeah, even the 480 was kind yep. of fine for getting that job done at a ridiculously low uh, power draw. Exactly. And so if you can step up to a 690, you're in really good shape. You're, I mean, it's just, that is a solid... That's a very good daily driver performer. 765 yeah. gets you a few extra little perks for some extra uh, GPU power. Exactly. And then, and then we're off and running with like Dimensity 8000 and Snapdragon 870s. You know. Well, like the, the the Neo it gets 3, so good from there. Yeah. So I started seeing some people talking about the Neo Three uh, with the 8100, uh, the Dimensity 8100. So I was like. Oh, it's exciting. Man, I want that we're so, so bad. I I am so like seriously. I I want to see some of the high end performers on MediaTek. I, we haven't seen any of those, and obviously in the U.S. they're not even starting. And in, in, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think um, OnePlus just released a, a variant of one of their devices in China that supports the 8100 as well. So we're starting to see co them coming out in different markets. Like the yeah. Neo Three uh, is in Europe. So Europe is going to be getting some media tech. I just feel like U.S. needs to, we need to find some place for us to kind of um, enjoy it there. So a lot of, those are like some of the new announcements that were, not announcement, but like devices that were talked about. The Neo yeah. was announced a few weeks, I think was it a couple of weeks ago. Um, and then, you know, just overall with everything kind of going on, like I said, we you know, traveling and uh, work and a whole bunch of different things. Uh, not a lot of videos kind of got pushed on the channel, but there was obviously a lot of interesting things kind of going on a little bit in the background. Mm -hmm. uh, Netflix taking a massive dro uh, drop over, uh, you know, starting to finally uh, lose subscribers. Man. That was a little... <laughs> so <laughs> like, we, we, did a, we did a video on reviews.org. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't this last video, but the video the week before. And I was like, yeah, you know, we're talking about this and can Netflix be the Netflix of gaming? And got like a lot of kind of sour replies about the recent price hike and no one's going to play games on Netflix. And I, 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 w I felt like I was kind. I felt like I was, I was being fair to the point of maybe leaning a little into too much kindness. And then like all of the stock announcements hit. And the subscriber loss instead of uh, finding additional subscribers and the crackdowns on password sharing. And like, you know, this is a, a real rough time for a standalone media entity that has no other um, industry. Yeah, it's kinda. not like Amazon. Amazon's this huge bucket of other services and shopping and stuff. Netflix is just Netflix. They don't have the resources of Disney. I uh, yeah, they're, they're, I mean, I, in my brain, the closest idea of a competitor is like HBO. And they're so much bigger than HBO, but they're so much smaller than like infrastructure-wise, Amazon or Disney or any of these other players. It's kind of it, crazy to see how we've landed at this point and, and, and well, just it was the many missteps think, that uh, Netflix has taken. Uh, there are many, many, uh, quite a few, actually. Price hikes have been going up and up. Um, you know, selection of co content hasn't been uh, supporting the hikes that they've been talking about. Like, you yeah. know, like, you know, 
we want to raise our prices because we want to be able to give you a lot more selection. And you you get once in a blue moon premiering of a new, you know, like a hit movie that they produced or the content in the libraries and so on. I think the biggest concern with this whole cracking on password sharing, and I don't think people yeah. realize. So you think that if you crack on it and you get people to let's say, oh, hell, you know, you're, you're, you're sharing your password, we're going to start charging you more. That's going to entice people to leave. It's not going to entice people to say, oh, okay, well, I'll pay the three bucks or the six bucks. This is going to start because you've got to realize this is on top of their new pricing point. This is not lower pricing and then you're going up to the existing one because, you know, Netflix is notorious for not grandfathering in people on their price plans. Every time a price point goes up, everybody gets hit with it. So at the end of the day, I, I feel like it was inevitable. A, a, a growth consistent year over year at, with the numbers, especially with the pandemic, when the pandemic first hit. Uh, that kind of overinflated some of their numbers anyways, because a lot of Big people time. were watching, you know, they're home, they're connected on the internet, they want to be able to watch content. Um, that that also kind of would, you have to kind of have a market adjustment a little bit. And I think Netflix needs to kind of also understand that, you know, going with a, an ad supported model, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know I, if people- I gonna... don't think you can go backwards for that. Yeah. I mean, so again, I'm inclined not to be- I, I... <laughs> I, I'm inclined to be very sort of emotionally fair to Netflix because they've been so progressive and so groundbreaking in moving us into this era of, oh, of content on demand. And also, I feel like they have to shoulder the burden of new living room technologies almost entirely by themselves. And when they prove the technology, then all of their competitors get to benefit from it. So from, you know, DVD rentals to streaming, Netflix had to build that infrastructure, fight for all of the interconnect fees, fight with all of the carriers and ISPs. They got hit the hardest in terms of, of uh, you know, data pricing, mm -hmm. just in making sure they could actually communicate. They even had to pay these ridiculous ransoms to Verizon. Like, if you want to reach our customers, you've got to pay us extra for the, the bandwidth that you use, which should have been totally illegal, but conservatives like to pretend that letting Verizon charge people different amounts of money for bandwidth is somehow free market. Um, right now, we're looking at this, like, rush into 4K. Well, Netflix still has, I think, one of the biggest footprints for distributing content, Mm -hmm. So they're going to be shouldering the costs on getting everyone up to speed on AV1. And once oh, yeah. AV1 really takes off, that's great. That's going to save about 20% on your data costs, your server load, your distribution costs. It's, it's going to be a net benefit for everybody. Yeah. But getting all of your consumers on board with hardware that properly supports AV1, Netflix is going to have to do that. Netflix is going to have to drive the initial uh, distribution of that hardware. And then we're going to see Disney and Amazon and HBO start migrating their catalogs to AV1 after Netflix has already taken the, the hit for them. So, so there's, there's a lot of this kind of back and forth. I still think 20 bucks a month for 4K Netflix is a pretty terrible deal. Like, if you're going to tell me that Netflix can charge per number of screens and per quality, I should be able to mix and match. Yeah. What I really want is three concurrent screens of 1080. That's what I want. That's what I would want to pay for. And I would imagine that would be somewhere closer to like their mid-tier plan around $16 a month. I'd want to cut four bucks off my bill and say, no, thank you to the 4K. I don't really need that. Yeah. But that's not what I can do. I can't pick and choose those parts of their plans. And so I get stuck right in between the two tiers and you're like, I don't fit in the HD tier and I don't fit in the UHD tier. And I so think now it's that by, means... by design. I, they realize well, no, it's, and it, I'm sure it they is. have the Yeah. It totally is. But what that's going to force me to do is turn Netflix into a cycle service. So now I'm really inclined to push pause on Netflix until I know there's a, a, enough stuff that I want to watch that I'll turn them on for a couple months. And then when I'm done with that, I'll turn them back off. Yeah. Instead of me just being a regular customer and not even thinking about that Netflix bill, now every month I'm thinking, what is the value proposition and am I really using it enough? Did I get my 20 bucks worth of enjoyment out of Netflix? And that's really not good. That's a very bad place to be. Um, the psychology of that, the emotion of it, if your consumers are thinking about that monthly subscription, now's the right time to try and like Homer Simpson into the bushes 
<laughs> and and not draw any attention to yourself so no one's really thinking about it when they check their monthly you know bank account oh no no absolutely and i it's, I, I'm not going to deny the fact that I enjoy, I enjoy Netflix's approach to releasing content, and I th I like binging mm -hmm. binging series. Like uh, I I recently just finished um, Schitt's Creek. I honestly didn't think I was going to like that show, and it turned to be a very fun show to enjoy and watch. And yeah. I enjoyed watching all five seasons. I mean, I just kept going oh, yeah. through them as as I wanted. Obviously, not one sitting. But what I'm trying to say is, um, it's a rarity though to see a series that I like to watch that much on Netflix. And I, it, it, like you said, it ends up being the where I go a month or maybe a month and a half to two months before I find something else that I want to watch. And yeah. I have to keep, um, I have to keep kind of looking because there is this plethora of non like things that I don't necessarily appeal to me, but maybe Omar may like or something like that. But um, my wife doesn't even use Netflix anymore. She's primarily on, I think, is it um, on Hulu, primarily for their, uh, for their, <laughs> you know, for their shows. No, for I mean, sure. the, the, it, it, there's a big thing. I mean, uh, watch, if you do watch Korean dramas, then yes, I know uh, it is <laughs> Netflix. Is well, the... <laughs> I, I, I brought that up because I still feel like I am the right customer for Netflix. Okay, good. But I am the kind of guy, like I used to host a movie review show back when I first started putting out videos on the internet. Back in the well, olden I, days, I, yes. We were I, yes. Uh, sitting on the couch in the, in, in the living room with your buddy. Ancient time, time yeah, yeah, ago. Yeah. Yes. That, that makes sense for me because I am genuinely that guy who likes to dig into the nooks and crannies. I was the guy who was always finding the dusty shelf of unloved movies to rent at Blockbuster. And I would go through, I mean, and, and often it's, you're, you're going to like hate watch something terrible or you're going to find a total gem, like it's an old classic film or just something. I love digging through catalogs like that, but that's also going to be the blessing and the curse. Because I think yeah. Netflix's recommendation engine is kind of awful. And so if a customer goes to Netflix and they're just sort of bombarded by all of this stuff, there's going to be a tendency for them to fall back on things that are familiar. And then they're going to question, why am I paying 20 bucks a month to rewatch Seinfeld again? You know, it, you, you, the value proposition isn't there, but exactly like, uh, what you look I at is, is, uh, is talking about, you know, um, hashtag alive trained, I think train to Busan was on Netflix for a while. I don't think it's on Netflix anymore. Um, what is uh, the high school zombie show? I actually really enjoyed that too. But there was this like whole like slew. Oh, Psychokinesis. That was the other one that okay. I was trying to remember. These really great Korean uh, films and TV shows that I've just genuinely enjoyed. Uh, Netflix is a platform I still think is offering up some of the best content like that. Mm -hmm. My daughter is super into Is It Cake? It's the new oh. like game show. <laughs> I watched they... two episodes of that and I was like, okay, I can tell... But I, it's fun. It's a fun it's show. Hilarious. Right. Yeah, and it's hilarious, and it's bad. But yeah, you know, yeah. my daughter's six, and she thinks it's it's hysterical. Oh my yeah. god, they did the thing, and it wasn't cake, and they thought it was cake. Oh my god, they're so dumb. You know, like in that way that a six year old is really into that. Yeah, so yeah. It, the, it, it's that thing, you know. Like I, I kind of feel like just because Netflix lost Friends and The Office, and the uh, the Marvel shows all went to Disney Plus people are acting like the catalog suddenly evaporated, which oh, isn't entirely fair. No, because, no, no. Yeah. You know, um, Power of the Dog that we saw, that was a Netflix original. You've got uh, Midnight Mass. I'm like, I still like find myself kind of chewing up the philosophy of Midnight Mass. Yeah. Um, there was the Mind Hunter, the, um, the, the Haunted House uh, TV show, Hunting at Hill House. Um, I mean, again, there's this like wealth of stuff. You just can't get too attached to the TV shows because you know they're only going to get two seasons before Netflix pulls the plug. Yeah, it, it, it's <laughs> it's that whole idea of separating distribution from production, and yeah. Netflix definitely needs to reassess their movie studio green lighting practices mm -hmm. and and maybe Absolutely. focus a little bit more instead of just throwing out random stuff all the time. But I, I again, I, my biggest philosophical problem with Netflix is not having better, cheaper tiers for HD streaming. 
So I'm not going like, to go down to standard def. That's that's just ridiculous in this day and age. I, I I don't even know how yeah the even how that even is an option, but it's more of an. I think it's always like a, a they always have to introduce something or provide something that will kick you up to the next one because you'll be like this is so yeah. unbearable. I'm like watching it on a 50 inch TV and it looks worse than my 720p display that's on a phone or something. That's so bad. And the <laughs> yeah, compression yeah. is like per, is again that 999 tier we were just talking about the Galaxy S22. Um, that 999 tier is totally the pain point. It only exists to make you want to step up to the 1080p tier because ab ab the ab compression ab is so bad. And, I, and it, it's intentional. I think that's that's the biggest thing. Um, Obviously, yes. Um, Completely I agree. I, I, there, like I said, <laughs> there are certain that we need. My hope is that they start figuring out what they want to do. Charging, charging for a subscription and going backwards and providing a subscription tier with ads. I don't think pe many people are going to be appreciating that function because uh, having had that service for so long, I mean, heck, man, uh, even uh, Hulu, no ads is 11 bucks. Yeah. And and that's Hulu, right? And where they're running more concurrent, uh, like uh, recent shows that were just published, like things that are actually more mm -hmm. current, not necessarily like a large library. They do have movies and so on. But uh, what I why my worry is, is that what Netflix is trying to do right now is well, we can fix this by by charging uh, extra money from uh, you know the people that are the sharing passwords and so on. You may get a little bit of dollars here and there, but I sure. think at, in a general idea, that cousin's friend's distant fr uh, brother that is using somebody's password from like an old relationship that they're trying to figure out, more than likely <laughs> will just not be using it anymore. It's not you're not really yeah. making money, and you're not going to gain subscribers from from that from that reality. So, all you're but, doing but is creating. Maybe a revenue. No, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. In, yeah. in terms of actually monetizing unpaying customers, I think this is a terrible strategy. But I actually think Netflix is in a is in a pain point themselves. Yeah. And if their assessment is in any way accurate, if they're serving bandwidth to a hundred million potential non-paying customers, it is better to get them off that service. Yeah. So if you I, make it more painful idea. to share passwords and you make it, I mean, obviously your paying customers get hurt by some of those practices too, I but mean, I think yeah. they're looking at the churn rate. We're probably going to lose fewer of our paying customers than we will get rid of all of the bandwidth leeches by making this more painful to do. And, and right now, again, mm -hmm. like I said, everything about Netflix right now has been towards trying to improve compression, improve distribution. Their highest tier is expensive because it takes up the most bandwidth and they've got to front the costs for a hundred million people not paying for their service. So if, if we want to eventually find some sort of stasis where Netflix doesn't feel like they have to keep jacking up prices, the only thing, other thing they can do is cut server and bandwidth costs. And mm -hmm. if they piss off these people who weren't paying customers and I'll just not stream Netflix anymore, good. That's what we want. As if you pay for Netflix, we want those leeches off of the platform so that Netflix can figure out how much their service is really worth for the people that are paying for it. And then maybe we can find some kind of balance there. But it's, it, it, it's, it's all the terrible timing and the bad yeah. messaging that's, I think, yeah, yeah. really doing Netflix in right now. No, no, I, I, like I said, I, I'm, I'm not against them um, figuring out what's going on. I just, I feel like if their goal was to increase subscribership, I don't think that may that that is the uh, probably more than likely the outcome that's going to come. Um, but I also worry about how they're going to be managing the subscribe the uh, the sharing of the password. Yeah. Because the the question is, Netflix is a mobile app. Netflix is on mobile mm -hmm. devices all around. So you're telling me, it, you know, unless they have a, a very sophisticated way of being able to track who is the actual owners and who's using it, because like you said, yeah. uh, you know the the 4K allows you to do multiple screens, so. What is it to mean? Like I say, I'm traveling to, you know, I go to New York, I go somewhere and I'm on, or I'm in Europe or I'm in Asia and I'm watching Netflix. So are you going to think I'm sharing my password with somebody that lives there and you're going to so, flag uh, my account? It's going to be tricky. I, I know like yeah. in the Netflix blog, they tried to detail, excuse me, they're going to be pretty loose about this definition of a household because um, they have to be, because we do, yeah. we live in an, an ultra mobile um they yeah, realize that Netflix is on now. the switch. It's on your phone. It's on your tablet. Yeah. Um, even on some but, dashboard, uh, even on the like head units for the car, they include yeah. Netflix as a function now. I'm like, um, 
but but also to the to the same token i think what they're pretty good at is behavior modeling and looking mm -hmm. at ip addresses and again this isn't multiple accounts under one payment i think the first wave of calling is going to be this person has a password that's showing up in orange county and this person has the same password and they're showing up in San Francisco. And, it's and this, consistent. this person in Orange County is consistently into these types of shows and movies. And this person in San Francisco is into completely different shows and movies. We can be reasonably sure that these are two different people in two different households that are sharing the same Netflix password. Let's get them to pay two or three dollars more a month instead of a whole extra account. And then they can um, share logins and credentials and come up with a new user account. I mean, like I, I think plan. that's going to be the first massive push. And I think yeah. with that, you could probably immediately call 20 million non-paying subscribers just on that kind of data alone. Oh, no, absolutely. And I think that's what they're going to need to start doing is analyzing because they've ignored that part for, for the, for the, since they started, I mean, nobody, yeah, I mean, um, I'm not saying I personally use somebody else's password, mm -hmm. but what I mean is, um, you know, like the scenario that you just described, I mean, who is to say that that's not your son that just went to college and he's gone right. for the last six, seven, eight months. So, so again, that would be to me, the, 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 the right thing for those people to do would not be to have one account. It would be to set up custom users, multiple users. Mm -hmm. And you would probably already be on the 1080p. Like, again, if you're doing the 999 and you only have one user, it's one stream at a time, one password, yeah. it's already only one stream at a time. So, again, I don't think that's the first wave of people that Netflix are going to go after. If you're paying for the two screens at a time, 1080p, multiple user accounts, I think those people are going to be second wave for Netflix yep. to try and figure out who's doing what and are they really a part of the same family. I'm talking about just genuinely like there's one Netflix account with one password and they're trying to just kind of bounce it around multiple people or families or users. I think that's going to be the very, very, very first push, the tip of the spear. Um, but I think that's also going to cut quite a few people. And again, from people that were in relationships and had shared passwords and things I know. like that. That, that, that. That's the, yeah, yeah, your ex-girlfriend. I mean, we as techies, I think we're giving a lot of people a lot of extra credit that they would have set up multiple user accounts yeah. under one password, right? So I, I think from there, you kind of, I think from that first push, then they'll start trying to find other more sophisticated ways to say like, this isn't really a household. You're not really members of the same family. And, and that gets messier, but I also think it's like Netflix doesn't have anywhere else to go. I, I, There's I, really nothing else they can do. They've at least got to try. And unfortunately, they're probably going to piss off a lot of people along the way, but it, it, it's, it's kind of necessary at this point for how ubiquitous their service is. True. And it may also remind some people that are like, oh, hey, by the way, your password's being used by somebody else. It's like, what? Right. Some people may not be aware. You're like, you separate whatever and, and the, you know, they sure. may still have the account logged in on a PC or something. Um, it, it is at the end of the day. It's just, like I said, it, it was an interesting, it made big news. Uh, obviously, their stock got hit. Uh, there's a lot of conversation going around it. And then shortly after that, we also heard about CNN Plus kind of taking a nosedive into <laughs> <laughs> non-existence. Not even... What? Oh my God, like you couldn't, you, you couldn't celebrate the, Hey, 30 day celebration. Um, <laughs> it didn't, did, what was that other really terrible, like phone service was like Quibi or something. Quibi, like it that? was, well, Quibi had, had, okay. Quibi lasted longer. No, that's Quibi what I was going to say. Quibi was outlasted was saying, CNN plus. Uh, I couldn't, uh, I, I couldn't be happier uh, with that result. I am I, so not a fan of CNN. I, 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 I was just, good. I was I, good with this, with this. Would you, uh, okay. So would you. Would you believe it if I told you, this is the really honest to God truth. I didn't even know they launched CNN Plus. I heard about it being failing first before I even knew it existed. It's I was, bad. I, I was down I, in Hollywood for a shoot and there were um, bus stop uh -huh. posters <laughs> all down, um, uh, not, 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 uh, all down Vine. Mm -hmm. Every bus stop had <laughs> CNN Plus <laughs> posters on it. And you're like, <laughs> it's already dead. It is. It, it's. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, man. Um, oh, the, I mean, the CNN Plus posters outlasted the CNN Plus. <laughs> the, the actual subscription. Um, 
you know, it just obviously CNN as, as a news organization, I think, you know, for an extra five ninety nine a month, I don't know if it was something it's a news organization, right? I mean, it's not like you're going to yeah. be uh, you're, you're not compete, Although, you're not going to be able up, to like the Stanley Tucci show. Did, I so thought they, they, they grabbed they were a couple trying to big up like they, that. They were trying. Well, obviously, I mean, even Quibi. If you think about Quibi, Quibi had some really good IP. I mean, there's a lot of good show that were you know ideas and, and celebrities, and they were able to get a lot of people in into investing and spending a lot of the money on there. I mean, anyways, yeah, it, it just it was. I'm, I'm not gonna. Say, I mean, I, I you know we're laughing, we're smiling about it, but the reality is more about the comical effect of what happened. The fact that it you know crash and burn less than a month. It's it's a pretty big thing for an organization that's been struggling for quite some time. I mean, if you remember, yeah. CNN it itself was struggling uh, yeah, for the longest time until I think was it the, like the Bush, uh, the Bush administration, the first Bush administration when things started kind of becoming more you know, newsworthy and so on. Uh, but anyway, not to turn this into more of a, you know, kind of a news <laughs> thing or whatever. It was just funny to two streaming content great right? one company that's been around for for years and spearheading and, and trying to provide and, and i will say one thing last thing about netflix i want i don't want to take too much on that i love their parental control functionalities more yeah. than any other service on the market right now it's any good. of them um locking specific shows genre uh specifically the, uh you know blacklisting specific shows oh yeah creating specific profiles for kid and age the the age concerns uh I, I hate the fact how uh, Hulu does it. I don't like how uh, HBO does it. Uh, Disney obviously hasn't hit that, but with Moon Knight, I'm well, starting to question But they're facing if, some of those concerns now that they have the Netflix uh, series with mm -hmm. ultra violence on them. No, no other platform was as proactive. As soon as we set up a kid's account yeah. for Lex on Netflix, the immediate um, culling of content i mean like the focus with which programs were automatically um accessible was mm -hmm. was kind of phenomenal and then from there you can kind of customize on ages and things like that yeah. you can go by age ratings and stuff but what like what automatically happened just out of the box as soon as we said that it was a kid's account is the best i've seen from any other platform disney's now having to face that um, they're, they're going to be bringing on a few more like of the Fox films from their Fox acquisition. They're going to run into more issues with their parental controls. I think Amazon has still been kind of the worst. It, it's, Even on our kids' still, account, it's hard to really narrow down like what is the it selection. that they can watch. Yeah, yeah, so that's where the problem is. It's, it's different. Um, with, with Amazon, I find that it works best with rating and password locking. Mm -hmm. So although I can't lock the show, uh, I mean, I can lock the show. Unfortunately, the previews are not locked, but it, it's a little bit, when I look at it from a gradual, um, just from a technology standpoint, um, HBO disregards all of this and says, just lock your profile, create a profile for yourself and put a pin. And that's pretty much how you're going to be able to lock your kids mm -hmm. out and you create a separate profile for them. And in theory, that makes sense, except that you don't get, you don't log out or you don't get logged out of your profile. Every time you shut the app, you automatically yeah. jump back in and it's already authenticated. Plus having to put a pin on the screen with a key with a remote where it's in the living room and you're <laughs> it's just the sheer functionality it's just non-convenient every time i want to put a pin i'm like i have to ask my kid to turn around or put his face in a pillow like wait wait till i'm done putting my pin kind of thing yeah um netflix is definitely there is so many things that we've we take into for granted now the parental control for sure i love that function so much uh, and I really wished we had that more, but we'll we'll have to see. We'll have to see how kind of that, that evolves. And I'm sure Netflix is going to prevail. They're I'm not saying they're too too large to to fail, but they've been innovative. They've gone through worse situations in the past, yeah. and they've been able to kind of innovate and move forward. And I, it still provides I, a value. I'm not going to say they're a foregone conclusion. I think we've seen bigger companies make you know smaller missteps, and then the company vanishes. So I, I still feel like. This is a very precarious predicament that Netflix mm -hmm. finds themselves in. They can't count on, you know, a sort of exponential growth. Like we're starting to hit that subscriber uh, streaming fatigue in a yeah. big way. And this is where a company really needs to be nimble and innovative. And this is at the time, you know, like Netflix capitalized on the mismanagement of Blockbuster back in the day. If Netflix yeah, yeah. isn't careful, they could go the way of Blockbuster and all of these other streaming services will be able to outmaneuver them. 
But I also feel it's probably a good thing for Netflix to kind of shrink a little bit, mm -hmm. refine, refocus their efforts, make sure their production um, arm is on, is, 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 is firing yeah, on all cylinders. The, I was going to say the spending arm needs to also make sure that they're definitely be ranked. Yeah, not yes Absolutely. to everything. Yeah, yeah. But this is also the opportunity. We were talking about this a while ago. I think this is a very good time for Netflix to look at some strategic partnerships or acquisitions. Mm -hmm. So maybe for once, once you cull 100 million users, if you can keep a certain part of your base, at least at the 1080p tier, this would be a really good time for them to hook up with like a music streaming service. Maybe they don't even own it or they don't buy it, but you reach out to Pandora and say, hey, is there a deal that we can work out where for someone's Netflix fee, we can subsidize their cost on a Pandora subscription or a Spotify family or, or a CoBuzz or some or Tidal. Tidal would be yeah, another think, great I, one to reach out to. I think to. You, you, you even said CoBuzz at one point. This would have made a perfect I, combination. Yeah, I, I would prefer CoBuzz stay solo, but if I could pay for <laughs> CoBuzz by... I, only Ooh, buying a Netflix subscription, then I would do it. But I that's like, what I mean I, is like, the, we'll, we'll never accept from Netflix what we take for granted from Amazon, where my Amazon Prime is all of these great things. What a huge value. But when Netflix tries to tack on- Which also on, went up in price. <laughs> but yeah. Which also went up in price. But when Netflix tries to tack on additional services, we freak out about price increases because I don't want to pay for games on my Netflix account. And the games are getting pretty good. Um, to me, it would make a lot more sense to look at other sort of rolling subscription services that someone might be able to save money with. And I think this would be a huge opportunity for Netflix to take a look around, look at, you know, books and publishing, look at music streaming, look at other things that you can start absorbing, making your, your product a little bit bigger, but then we don't have to worry about jacking up the price because we've also been reducing the number of freeloaders. So you don't reduce costs for the consumer, but you add more value. And that yeah. starts to make Netflix look a little bit more like Amazon Prime. I don't want to cancel my Netflix. I get these games and I get this music and I get these TV shows and I get this interactive content and I get these movies. I think that could be a great long-term play, but it's not a conclu it, it, it's, it's not a certainty that they'll survive this transition. I think they're in a very dangerous spot right now. Absolutely. And I, I think we'll have to see. We'll, we'll have to see how, the, how, how that kind of the progression of this conversation. It just it literally this happened a few days ago um, and it's still somewhat in the, in the transition. Dude, I'm yeah. addicted to. <laughs> I, I'm telling did you ever play Arcane? Um, was it Arcanium or Arcanum? No, no, I, I, I haven't. Uh, just OK. Wait. The recent patch helped fix some of the compatibility issues. It's playing okay. a lot smoother on a lot more mm -hmm. phones now. I'm not super into deck building card battle games. It's pretty good and it looks real nice. Mm -hmm. um, the, again, they just they just rolled another a a patch to Asphalt Extreme. And it's so nice playing an Asphalt game where you don't have all of those ridiculous like card packs to buy. I mean, you still have to go through cards, but it's like the only way you can get these things is by racing. Unlocking. It's not like, yeah, yeah. oh, you just pay $100 and you can get all of these, you know, slot machine rolls to try and unlock your favorite vehicles. It's just grind. You just play the game. Um, Lex is super into Nittens. Okay. It's such a, it's a Candy Crush clone, but if she runs into trouble and she messes up her board, she can't just buy power-ups. She just has to put the game down for a couple minutes and let her clock recycle. I mean, there's some pretty good stuff in there. It's it's not bad. They used to also picked up. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's like Into the Dead or something like that. I was about. Um, that's why we were. Yeah, when you were talking about that, the I was, Zombie I was Runner. Like, I was opening up Netflix and just jumping into the gaming section. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Um, so they have. Like, what is that game called? I just I just played to say Card Blast is also pretty good too. If you so like. Asphalt is Extreme Racing Game is Game. added in there. Ar Arcanium, like you said, is in there. Um, in, yeah, Into the Dead Two Unleashed. Uh, Into <laughs> the Dead Two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Stranger Things Three, the game that's a little bit more classic, and then uh, Hextech. Uh, they have. I mean, they have a few options in there as well. So yeah, definitely. I think they just announced another one today. I can't remember what it was. 
but um but yeah so it, it's not asphalt extreme it, it, it's <laughs> it's not up to the level of apple arcade but because it's a part of a subscription all of those ridiculous microtransactions just kind of go away so okay so speaking of transactions speaking of things uh, that are also happening and i do want to talk about the matebook e at some point but i didn't get a chance sure. to put this on the top level um, top level on the uh, on the title and let's yeah. let's hope Sony loves this one. Come on, Sony. Day, come, come on. on. Oh, Do for the, the love. Thing. Of it. Sony is just ah, uh, it's just not okay. I'm I I, I want to get this thing in focus because this is super important for me. I waited for this case to exist, and not only to wait for it to exist, but also wait for it to get here. So you know, you could <laughs> you could kind of see it here. It's the eye stock. I love it. Uh, it's a custom. Oh, here now we're working. And here we go. Hey, so beautiful. this is a, a glacier mat case specifically built for cooling the uh, mm -hmm. Find X5 Pro. It it actually, it, even though it looks very rigid, it's not, um, the material is actually has a, a pouch, like a cooling pouch, like a gel pouch inside of it uh, in the actual material here. Uh, okay, we can't nice. get, yeah, this is not gonna focus unless I tap here. So here, this is actually very soft material and it absorbs mm -hmm. the heat and dissipates it out of the phone. Nice. And um, in my early testing, at least it's because the Find X5 Pro, very similar to the way the OnePlus 9 Pro, uh, 10 Pro does, it's a very controlled gaming experience. So like we can't play Undead mm -hmm. Horde at 120. Um, it doesn't really go very, it doesn't get very hot. Let's just say that. But where it does get is about 110, 115 or so. And now I'm seeing that the temperatures are actually cooling down to about 107. It is bringing down the temperature by bringing and cooling that little membrane inside of the case and allowing it to radiate the heat and absorb nice. some of that heat. So um, definitely some improvements on the back. On the front, unfortunately, it still it doesn't really change much. Dissipation of the heat yeah. through the display doesn't get fixed by adding cooling to the back, but it looks nice. It's, uh, it's slim. It protects the phone on the top and the bottom, and it does raise the camera elements on it, but it looks really nice. So first party cases from, from OnePlus, absolutely kick ass. And um, I also got a chance to get the Enco X2, the Oppo Enco X2, the earbuds. Oh, very uh, the nice. One, uh, uh, Jeff El Jefe just dropped his video on those, so hopefully mine will be mm -hmm. sometime next week. Um, really nice, exciting to, to, to see some of the LHTC, because that supports LHTC, uh, kind of like what the OnePlus technology. We're starting to see a lot of similarities between OnePlus and Oppo T yeah. uh, between the two. Uh, so yeah, for... Uh, really excited stuff but unfortunately literally i got them a couple of days ago so i haven't had enough time to get a good idea around them and i've been seriously like in conference calls using the encos and as well as using the edifiers which i need to push the mm -hmm. video out tomorrow the neobuds pro they're good um, right dude the microphones on them are crazy they're good they're like solid performers i, I mean mm -hmm. what am i talking about we, we were talking on them a couple of days ago um, yeah while while Juan was coming back, TK and I occasionally talk on the phone outside of our podcast. It, it's too. not it's not just on camera. We, I promise <laughs> we, we truly <laughs> we truly true we truly do talk outside. Um, but I do want to uh, I, I don't want to get too far, but I do want to have a little bit of an update on the Tesla front. I, I don't know if, uh, if, if oh no Tesla front and so on. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna lean back in my chair because something tells me this is this is gonna have a little drama. Uh, hold on a second. Let Go me... on. It needs a sip. Um, so <laughs> he had to fortify himself before. Just to, to kind of get my mind into it. Um, so it looks like I'm not going to have my car back for at least about three, maybe almost a month from now. And um, I'm sorry, it's... I shouldn't <laughs> laugh. It, it, it was the the buildup. I thought you were going to go for you know three, maybe four more days. Yeah, no, and then you uh, went to three weeks. maybe a month it's that's it's, uh, pretty rough the, the little bit of background to the story um my car for about the last couple of months or so has been suffering from a cut for from a weird bug and uh, just for kind of reference uh, a tesla at about a year's timeline when you have a car there is a degradation of the battery capacity a certain three to five percent of battery uh, battery capacity is expected you don't lose a lot but it's, it's supposed to be three to five percent and based on the research and in so around that time my car is not supposed to basically go all the way up to 356 but for the last two months i've been gradually losing battery capacity so my car cannot charge to the where it's supposed to be at 90 90 percent, which was 316 and it's been gradually dropping and as of last week when i dropped off the car um, my 90 percent now is at 279 miles so i've lost quite a bit 
So about 36 mile of range, which is over 10% um, from when it's supposed to be at it because maximum that, is 350. That hurts. Um, so I took it in and, and of course they were like, you know, well, we need to test it and so on. So they did test it and apparently, unfortunately there is a problem with the battery and the battery needs to be changed. So the, the large capacity battery on the car. The problem is they don't keep those in stock. The other problem is it has to come from China. So shipping getting it here and the fact that it's because it's you know they don't they don't they don't keep in stock batteries for one year old cars they expect that for the two to three maybe four year old cars so yeah. for my specific unit because it was 2021 it's taking longer and it's a three to six week shipping um so that's why i'm actually I'm, just, I'm kind of going halfway in between i'm hoping one week is already gone and there's maybe three weeks or so left uh but the kicker about it is the guy was like, hey, we'll give you the car back if you want to drive it around. Just understand that every time he charges, it's going to keep losing range. And I'm like, okay, so I have a, I have a big, <laughs> it, it's not a good, it's not a settling thing. But here's the, the last thing that he said that made me say, no, I don't, I don't want to really pick it up. He said, um, the, you'll keep losing range till the car decides it's not safe to drive anymore. And I'm like, I don't want to be in that position where I go on, yeah. let's say, San Diego, go to Santa Barbara, whatever. You know, we we drive, we take the car for for weekends and stuff. I don't want to get to the position where my car kind of locks me out and like, oh, I'm sorry, the the battery's no longer, car is not safe to drive, so you need to tow it. And I'm like, that's not a good place. So, yeah, for the next few weeks or so, your buddy's going to be a heavy subscriber to Uber and uh try to stay home as much as i, can. I don't know well that that, uh, that is a bummer i know we're sort of talking about uh, uh you know sort of automobiles at the bleeding edge of yeah. consumer electronic technologies but it's never fun when you've got to sort of face some of those real world teething pains yourself like if, so. if we want to do a sit down and have a, a live stream together i will be ubering to your place on the next one because i'm assuming that's how the cycle is going to go like somewhere closer but anyways i'm 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 okay. I'm happy on one end because they finally started to be more communicative. They're responding mm -hmm. responding more on the app because they were just dead silence for about a week and not a word. And I had to keep calling calling. Um, I'm also happy that they're taking care of it, but you know, supply chain, shipping, all of those things are starting yeah. to hit heavy. But I'm having flashbacks of when I had to wait for my car. That's how long it was. It was about a month oh, or so. Especially their their estimates being so broad broad like, and well, it could and, be a couple weeks it could be a month we don't know depending on how there's the no way to in. know yeah um and and for reference just so everybody knows uh, the battery we're talking about is the size of a mattress like a queen mattress bed it, it's not a small battery it's it, we're not talking battery pack obviously like a, not a 12 volt battery we're talking it's gonna say you just don't plug your phone in in reverse and do reverse power share and keep your phone you keep your car driving that that would make my s22 ultra the most amazing power sharing as like i'm charging my car you know <laughs> or put some, i mean you know conductive well, let's let's talk about samsung screen on time when you're <laughs> reverse power sharing to your car so there you go i like that i like aditya jumping in it says the car decides bro you own the car the car shouldn't decide anything <laughs> <laughs> a warning light maybe sure no uh uh, weird enough. Um, so although I was having problems with the, with the range dropping, the car actually told me, they gave me an error message and said, schedule an appointment now. Uh, something is there. There is a concern regarding your battery schedule an appointment. So the car is, there is it, intelligent technology built in there for safety. Yeah. It did run, it did put the flag out saying, Hey, something is not right. Please, you know, take care of it. And then when I did take it in, sure enough, something was wrong. Um, and it needs to be replaced. And luckily, you know, it, it's it's not too long. Yeah. I mean, I don't even, I don't even have ten thousand miles on the car. That's how yeah frustrating this, this like still like breaking it in. Right. Uh, I mean, anyway. you're you're still into like the early conditioning on that battery. For, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, and I, I took rough. care. Of, I I made sure not to supercharge it all the time. I I only charge it to ninety percent. I don't even charge it at the level two maximum capacity of forty eight. I charge it at forty one so that I don't push the battery. I let it charge overnight everything and anything that could have been done to manage the battery to its most comfortable uh, and allowing it to to degrade very gradually over time mm -hmm. um didn't help uh none of that helped uh, unfortunately well so to, we'll to me to and like scoop is saying that just sounds like a whole bad sell like oh absolutely unfortunately, and yeah it seems like you got hit with one of those actual 
warranty issue it, she, replacement we're, things. It's just the infrastructure for replacement parts isn't there right now. Yeah, and and the weight is, and especially because all of these are made in China, they have to be shipped from there. So it's not like you know they can just send it down to me from Fremont from their factory because those those batteries are subscribed to a specific SKU, so they get those hard. You know, it's a just in time type of uh, production. If you guys know, yeah, uh, Tesla doesn't stock uh, inventory to build. They're building as people are ordering, and it just yeah, whatever hardware goes in goes straight in. So they can't just send them one from down there or some of their other facilities. Uh, Tiki had a dead cell. <laughs> I should stop playing dead cells. See, this is what happened when you get me to play the game called dead cells. Then my car gets dead cells, and it's like. There you go. Resurrection See? is next one. And then, you know, Alien Isolation. No. Um, it does feel weird, though. It, it does feel, every time I call an Uber, I'm like, I shouldn't be doing this. This is wrong. I, 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 I want my good it? car. I, had, I want I my good it. car back. I, I want my fast car. I, I want my Model 3. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, and my, I, I, we, we still, I mean, like, it's going to be probably, we've got like a two-year plan. Mm -hmm. on no more car payments for a while and then flipping one of our cars and we want to go electric my mom is like is is just like uh she's she's stunting pretty hard like oh and my tesla does this and oh my tesla does that and you're like i know mom we we might get one i don't know we might go hyundai maybe but hyundai? i just hyundai? really want to be back i just yeah. really want to be back in a hatchback i miss being in a little little car i love tooling around in quick little cars and if tesla the rumors are about like a tesla hatchback mm -hmm. again i'd say over the next two years if we got any kind of news on that i would put that back on but um i forget what is it, the ionic or mm -hmm. i whatever the hyundai uh brand it is, is the ionic I really i really like um the look and the size of that car i i and i'm i'm starting well the reality is with the next couple of years we are going to have a lot more competition um, there is a there's a plus to the fact to the fact that existing ecosystems or infrastructures are obviously more established for for mm -hmm. gas services and I think um, a, a little bit of a thing I think I saw somewhere if if you do have an electric car on Earth Day Electrify America in the U S and most of their locations are going to allow people to charge for free so just kind of nice thing if you guys own one I won't be able to protect but anyways um, the um, the, the the infrastructure is being built up we're seeing more companies and more people do it. The, the biggest thing that I don't think people are in, are talking enough about is that if you do decide to pick up an electric car, you need to make sure you're able to install a home charger. Yeah. This is a massive thing that most people don't talk about because at Tesla, even when I was, um, uh, when I was getting my car, like they didn't mention at all. Like they're like, you can, if you want to, we do sell one on the website and so on, but you know, you have access to this full ecosystem of, of charging. Initially, it's very convenient to, yeah, I'll, I'll do it there. I'll do it. But, but then at some time, at some point, things kind of go, you know, you don't want to wait, you don't want to go spend that much time sitting somewhere to charge. It, it becomes an, yeah. uh, uh, an, an inconvenience and it becomes a kind of a, a deterrent. It makes you start feeling like, why am I having to do this? Uh, people that live in apartment buildings are going to be obviously the, big, the biggest if they're trying to get a car. Uh, but, you know, for you guys, if you're able to, once you do the, decide to pull the plug, uh, there are so many good options now with Electrify America even providing uh, a lower cost charging, uh, level two charging at home than, than what you'd get from Tesla. So I, I've been just ever since I've had the car, I've always kind of looked. And um, so, yeah, that's that's the latest with TK Tesla, uh, Tesla, uh, I don't know, <laughs> the Tesla crisis uh, <laughs> this week. Tesla crisis. I... I, I don't know. I, we have a meet this weekend and um, we're trying to figure out how we're going to do it because gas is so expensive. So we're, yeah. we're going to have to, you know, use my wife's car now. So our trip is going to cost us way more than it would have been if we had my car. So, yeah, anyways. that's a bummer. Yeah. But yeah and BJ Gray 7, same. I mean, like it, 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 we're, we're in that two year uh, window where I'm hoping we'll see Sony Honda. Sony, Sony did have two cars at CES. Well, no, that's what I mean is because we talked yeah. about it a while back too, is like there's going to be a joint collaboration between those two brands. And that also has me very interested. Um, Honda manufacturing with Sony tech could be yeah. really cool. Um, I really, I, 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 like we could end up with something like a Hyundai Kona. The, the Kona is a little chunky for my tastes, but mm -hmm. would still be kind of a, a, a decent alternative. And then uh, we just got to see. I mean, that... 
the reality is like whatever car we get next is, is just got to be electric. And so we'll go one gas power, one electric, and then kind of phase out. That, that's how we've um, been, gas we, we, we kept it here as well. We, we didn't want to go all hybrid electric at the same time. We wanted to kind of have our foot in both doors a little for bit, sure. uh, at least for the foreseeable future till we have a better understanding of how things are. Um, but it, you just remember though, when you do get your car, make sure you call your electric company and mm -hmm. uh, change your rate. It, it, yeah, it, it does save a little bit of money to have your own because it changes the electrical rate that you have. Totally. Um, so other than that, I think for me on Monday, I dropped a video, which was the only other video, the only video I posted this week. Uh, I finally pushed out the video for the MateBook E, uh, the Huawei uh, Windows 11 tablet, uh, a very fun little nimble, um, you know, like it's basically just a very fun uh, tablet that you can actually make do so many things. Um, interconnecting yeah. it obviously within the ecosystem that we've typically expected to see from like Apple type of uh, experience, like the Apple wall garden, like uh, air dropping and so on. And having yeah. uh, Huawei share and Huawei super device functionality with the, uh, the P50, uh, the Windows PC and the monitor uh, was very, very nice. And I enjoyed um, multitasking and working with it. It's a beautiful 4K display that we're able to use on the monitor. So that was nice. Uh, and you know, it took me a while to get that out, but I'm happy that I was able to kind of put it together. It was, it was a good video, so we'll we'll, yeah, we'll see what else comes out. Yeah, it's just it's been a busy week. It's been seriously. Um, I mean, because there are a couple of things we can't talk about yet, but I've also just been looking at the list. I really want to go back and do kind of a revisit to the Pixel Six Pro. I mm -hmm. really want to go back and do a revisit to the Duo Two. I mean, these devices that kind of had this sort of negative assessment very, very early in the yeah. product cycles that have now grown into being these, excuse me, these, these really wonderful solutions. Um, like I'm still kind of rolling my eyes at some of the early coverage on one plus 10. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I did roll that, that major update. It was like an 800 megabyte update that we got last yeah, yeah. week. Yep. This, the, the one plus 10 was such a baller phone to travel with. Um, it was yet, like yet again. It's it's one of only three devices that is shooting 4K 120 frames per second video off that main sensor. It's just clearing data so fast. Yep. And when you get used to the feel of a Samsung, like the shutter actuation on a OnePlus just feels like like it's like like, like it's predicting your photo as opposed to the the pulse recover on the Samsung shutter button, just always feeling like you're missing the moment. Um, so running around after Lex, this is genuinely like one of the best video shooting experiences on the market. And yeah, there are some pros and cons in other areas and iPhones can do a few things better and Samsung's can do other things better. But like, if you're sleeping on what OnePlus has accomplished, then you're missing a wholly unique really wonderful sort of photography, capturing family memories, content creation kind of vibe. Um, it, 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 it was it was really solid. I mean, I ran um, last week's best of our week. That was off yeah. of the OnePlus 10, uh, just using the, the sort of rural 5G <laughs> out in, in, in New Mexico. And uh, it, it, it was really solid, like how that phone just never really let me down the only reason why I was turning to other devices like the Motorola was for more productivity style stuff. So as yes. soon as I needed something like, like a desktop mode, well, obviously OnePlus doesn't have it, but, um, I mean, it was, it was, it was like very specific kind of niche, you know, carving. I need the OnePlus for this. I need the, the Moto Edge Plus for that. I need the OnePlus for this. I mean, the, the, the Moto could have gotten a lot of this other stuff done, but like I find like the entertainment and fun and, and gaming stuff just felt better on the OnePlus, mm -hmm. um, the media consumption, the camera stuff. And then I turn around and be like, oh, well, we're in this hotel room and Lex is going to be kind of a beast about watching TV with commercials. So let me plug the Motorola into the TV and now we can just fire up our Disney Plus account and she can watch whatever she wants exactly the way that she's used to watching that stuff. And, yeah. and it's 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 such a, a clutch feature. I mean, again, if I could have like smushed those two phones into one, um, that would have been 
like obviously like the preferable solution, but so far <laughs> picking and choosing, mm -hmm. um, I've been really positive. One plus 10 has actually kind of landed a bit better than what I thought it was going to be. Um, it's performing better than I thought it was going to, um, it was going to handle. Absolutely. And I, and I think the, uh, the overall, the conversation on this is literally at the beginning of it. Um, and it's going to get more, more, um, my hope is that I think at some point or another, other companies start developing more functions into the desktop experience. OnePlus and Oppo allow us to see the desktop experience on the, on Android, but it hasn't had any optimizations. I don't think it's on yeah. anybody's radar. Mike, Michael was asking, I just plugged it into my UPerfect. I have my UPerfect down here. I actually did it at the very beginning of, of the Speaking, podcast yeah, if yeah. anyone was watching me move stuff around on my desk. Um, there is the Android desktop mode yeah which is not good um where for android 12 they've redesigned the app drawer and it doesn't work um the best version of it is on sony um yes sony's actually functional mm -hmm. on the oneplus phones with android 12 it's this kind of garbled text that's sized incorrectly so you can't click on the icon that you want to click on you're, you're always your mouse cursor is always off and when it does bring it up there's no drawer there's no dock anymore so you can't see what apps are open they just disappear and so there's no like minimizing and and recovering apps uh, as you're using them it, it's just so I would say it's even worse than where we were with like the Android 10 oh. desktop mode in terms of just direct functionality the only mm -hmm. thing that I think it might be good for is gaming or video streaming if that's all you're going to do. So like there's no multitasking. Don't even try. It, it, it's just too painful to try and well, use that UI you, for multitasking. You also need some type of uh, interface device, uh, interface to it because desktop mode on, on these devices doesn't come with the cursor which is what we typically get with like Samsung yeah. and, and, um, and uh, ready for. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm spoiled because I can, I can go to a touch screen, you know, like I've got, I've got those, I've got my Y max. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. I was, was going to say, yeah, you, you perfect is, uh, I've, I've got my next, next doc. doc. I, I mean, yeah. I can go touch screen. Um, but yeah, you do, you need some kind of mouse trackball something. Um, mm -hmm. and, and even then the only thing that I think would be okay is if you just wanted to full screen one app. Yeah. So like if you're playing a game and you just screen share, you're going to have letterboxing because the, the aspect ratio of your phone is different than the aspect ratio of a TV. If you use the Android desktop mode and you have a Bluetooth controller, mm -hmm. you can send a full screen, full 16 by 9 version of the game to the TV and you can play it that way. But then you turn around and you look at something like Ready 4 and it's just so good. Um, that it does all of those things with like the perfect menus for consumers to interact with and buttons. And you're like, man, this is just, it's next level stuff. The Android desktop mode is, is, is just such a, an over, it, it, it's like, what, what I'm trying to say is like an oversight. It, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's overlooked. It's, it's not really a part of Google's like update or upgrade strategy. It's barely it getting any attention. And what gets me that it, it's been there for generations now, and we still don't see it as, uh, on there. Even with 12L, which is what I thought at some point would make us see some more focus on larger displays, mm -hmm. larger format, and you maybe you want to talk about desktop experiences. Uh, still, unfortunately, you know, Nexus, uh, not Nexus, uh, Pixel devices even don't don't support you know display out, and nope. it, it's very much a. I think till they function till they open up that function, I think that's when we'll start seeing some more focus from Google. Because if they don't allow that function to work on their main phones, it's not something on their radar. This is not yeah. something they want people to experience. It's there, it kind of works. Like you said, a uh, single type of experience, single display, single app. Um, and if you're using it with the next doc or like a UPerfect or something like that, I feel like that makes sense. Or even one of those smart, not smart, like the USB-C displays that you see also on Amazon. Like the, I think we've both reviewed yeah. some of them. Uh, those also- Lapau, Ymax it, a few of those others. Yeah. It, it, absolutely. And for me, you know, like something like the, um, I'll say the, the Huawei monitor, although was intended mostly for Huawei specific functions, works great as a DeX monitor. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a crazy good dex monitor that's good built-in built-in speakers <laughs> um and of, of course very nice panel and of course USB-C connectivity and and all the different things in there um but it, it just to me was the one thing that blew my mind was I connected the MateBook E wirelessly because I used a super device function to the monitor and I have my mouse connected to the monitor wired to the monitor and I was using the mouse from the monitor on the laptop at the same time because of the <laughs> ecosystem it, it bridged itself it's so yeah. cohesive that it and do you um, remember when we used to have to buy like those kvm switches yeah, exactly to, i was like, like, oh, it's have, such having a to split and then you have to hit function and change this the input from one system just to switch to run two pcs and i think i still have some of my kvms uh uh you know switches I, I they even got small enough at the end mm -hmm. um but what, what really kind of also got me was like you can search your phone's um file system on the laptop by uh by the fact that they're connected over the the functionality and it shows up like i can i was actually able to find specific documents on my mm -hmm. phone images uh like specific content and transfer that over so um huawei has a very very good system going on unfortunately it's just not very accessible right now so yeah. unless you're willing to go into a monitor a pc which just for reference will work with anything windows obviously is not limited this is not part of the things that are going on with the mobile devices uh you know but yeah, it, it really surprised me, the, the flexibility and the feasibility of technology. And I want to see more of that in our normal ecosystem, like normal Android and so on. Uh, but yeah, it makes, makes, you, uh, makes you appreciate what Huawei can do and what they always try to do and push push the ecosystem forward. So I, I appreciated that. That was very nice. For sure. Uh, um, there was a question from, from Ron. One, any thoughts on 10-bit imagery on the OnePlus 10? Um, I, I'll let you start. I'll talk after. So, so I, I just want to say, like, the, the, the camera differences from OnePlus 9 to OnePlus 10, I don't believe are, are significant. Um, mm -hmm. Like, if we're talking main sensor to main sensor and what these sensors are capable of, their fast readout, you're, you're, they're more responsive, they clear data faster, they shoot faster video. That's the kind of thing that makes for a usability difference between these other phones. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm not sure we're seeing such. I'm not sure we're seeing from from a smartphone sensor and a smartphone lens on the back of a phone. I'm not sure we're seeing dramatic differences for the point and shoot style um, photography that a lot of folks are going to use these phones for. Um, I thought we were already in pretty good shape when it came to looking at raw files and editing and. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'm seeing, again, fundamental or radical differences from the OnePlus 8 Pro to the OnePlus 10 Pro in regards to that kind of, uh, that, that kind of data. But again, it's, it's, it's sort of these iterative improvements relying on the SOC to tackle more of the heavy lifting. Um, some of the computational effects have gotten shockingly fast. It's mm -hmm. it's almost in line with Vivo now for like low light photography. It can it can beat a pixel in in a sort of a night mode race. Mm -hmm. You know those those kinds of things I think are 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 a little bit more tangible, like that kind of lifestyle ease of use. Um, but I, I would say the only other major uh, difference that I need to take a look at is the new movie mode. Because I don't think that's gotten a lot of coverage either, where it's 21 by 9. Yeah. Um, and and it, you have options to not only control, like you can control shutter speed, ISO, um, white balance, but then you can also shoot log. Um, and we haven't had that since LG. Um, so, so that's the other thing I need to play with a little bit more. It's still not pro pro, if we're saying that the pro means camera pro. Like mm -hmm. we still don't have good audio support. Like I can't connect microphones or wireless audio or change the audio recording path or control the audio recording. So I still can't use this as like a, a mainstream vlogging setup like mm -hmm. I could with, um, you know, like with a Sony or with an LG. Oh. But it has gotten significantly more functional for crafting content. Um, it just feels a little behind. You know, like a Samsung's manual video mode still is a little bit more functional if you actually care about plugging in a microphone or something like that. It, it so, has so, gotten better, actually, even with yeah. audio mixing, allowing you to use external and internal audio at the same time on Samsung. So yeah. it's been, it's definitely getting better. I just feel like, um, I'll, I'll say this, 
Yes, definitely. Uh, for me, when I was looking into 10-bit color and ten, ten, the 10-bit uh, image, uh, trying to capture mm -hmm. images in, in this type of content, uh, you do need to have a, a software that actually supports it because it, it is not shareable yeah. content. Let's just say that. No. Windows natively doesn't support it. You need to download a converter. And yeah, surprisingly, even Photoshop didn't recognize these file formats, which is weird. Like my video editor recognizes the images, but you know DaVinci recognizes it, but Photoshop doesn't. Mm -hmm. Um, you need to actually convert. So the, the reality is there are so many functions and so many things in there. Also, when you get a chance to one, there's a few other filters they added. I don't know if you saw that. There was uh, three new filters in the um, in the standard camera app that they added. Uh, they, it was interesting, and I noticed those in there. Uh, different techno different um, options, but I feel like you're right. I don't know if I would go back as far as the 8. I would say between the 9 Pro and the 10 Pro, I feel like the cameras... Mm -hmm for the most part, feel very, very familiar and very, very like um, like brother, sister, very close, not that big of a different distinguishing factors other than modes that at some point maybe we'll start seeing on the 9 Pro. Um, X-Band is nice. I like the functionality. I think it's definitely and good. X-Bands are fun. Yeah, very, sure. very fun to try to play a little bit with the, some, uh, you know, um, not just the color, but even the uh, just the black and white. Um, I love black and white photography because it has so much character and so much contrast. Like you're able to, to over extenuate or, you know, just focus on the, on that emotional effect of the black and white image because it just invokes emotion more than a color image. Although obviously, you know, color uh, definitely works great. Um, nighttime photography for me was really nice. I liked them a lot. Um, I would still say though that the Find X5 Pro for me did a little bit better with the five axis stabilization on the main sensor you primarily would. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not saying, you know, don't get me wrong. Uh, when it comes to Oppo and OnePlus there there is a few tricks that Oppo keeps close to the chest. Um and um I still think that the, you know, there are certain things in there but for what we have and what the 10 Pro presents and is um with the exception of the fact that we need more storage, I feel like is that that was my biggest thing. You will run out of storage if you start taking it Fast. and driving it yeah. very quickly. Um, but it is a fun experience. It's fun and it's nice and it's it's really. I mean, it's very simple, very easy to use, and you're able to dive in a little bit more. Um, audio was a big thing for me as well. I, I don't I don't really I like the function of if nothing else on pixels to be ability of actually selecting my audio input. Even yeah. pixels have that, right? I mean, like it's a simple thing in there. Um, we need that more and more devices. We especially really when, need that, yeah. Yeah, uh, or it, include an adapter that allows you to do it correctly. Uh, that was the other thing with, with OnePlus is you needed to use an adapter to kind of get headphone jacks in there. But even then, not all of them work. So it, it gets, it, uh, it begs experimentation, which I don't think the, the general user is gonna try to figure out what works and doesn't work. If it just doesn't, they're just not gonna look at it. So. I'm looking forward to seeing your uh, your camera review on that for sure. Yeah, yeah, I, it's yeah. Uh, I mean, there's 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 a lot that's still going to feel like one plus nine. So I mean, immediately that kind of experience stays pretty consistent. Yeah. But I just wanted to see real quick because I'm not doing anything fancy here, but like a standard JPEG. So I'm just mm -hmm. taking a shot of stuff on my desk here. Yeah. The JPEG was three point nine meg, and the ten bit color. Um, HEIC was, is about 10% larger. Mm -hmm. So that's not bad considering HEIC is a different kind of compression and actually is a more efficient, like you can squish more information, yeah. but your file sizes JPEG to HEIC still seem to be uh, like an increase in about 10%. So whatever advantages that we have from the the better compression, the additional color information seems to be making up that difference. I don't know that HEIC 10-bit color is going to look that profoundly different um, when you're really comparing and contrasting. And especially like when you go and shoot raw or the new, what is it? It's not, they don't call it super raw. Um, they call it raw plus. Raw plus so right, if you also right. get into the habit of shooting raw plus, you have the overscanned DNG stacking that we saw first on um, the Vivo, and it's pretty good. So again, I, I just kind of feel like where we're at with the limitations on HEIC, um, 
you're probably better off getting the DNG and then maybe editing a little um, rather than looking at 10 bit color for the main photo app and then needing to convert that into a standard JPEG before you can share it anyway. It's like literally one of the first menu options you get. When you see the 10 bit color, you tap the mm -hmm. more and you say, it says, do you want to convert this to a JPEG? Because that's the only way you'll be able to show someone that photo off of your phone <laughs> is if you switch it first. So I, I don't know. I, I guess I'm, I'm being a little harsh on 10 bit, but I don't feel like that's really one of the major selling points of this yeah. camera. But this is my selling point of this camera. Hey, look at that. <laughs> I love it. Ah, that was such a crazy view. It was, it was, we were just getting off the uh, um, elevator. So of course I had to take a picture. <laughs> like, like an idiot. That's awesome. I, I just, I love, I love this. This, I mean, uh, I, I enjoyed using it uh, quite a bit at, at Disney. I, uh, I took it with me with the family the last couple of weeks. We were, yeah, we were it's talking. so solid. It really it is. is it good. is. Um, Champ, the battery lasted me quite a bit. Actually, all day. I didn't have to charge this one. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, connectivity was very solid. Ultra ultra capacity on T-Mobile, honestly, has been, um, I mean, it has, it's been, It's really nice. Don't get me wrong. Regular sub 6 5G was bad. Not bad. was yeah. great. This is just like next level. But I also feel like because not everybody has ultra capacity access yet. Like cause I'll, you'd have to give, you'd have to have a... Um, a late 2021 and early 2022 device for you to start yeah. getting that pixel 6 pro was for the for me the first device to show it and the s22 ultra obviously the s22 series now carry it um and then you know even even this guy the a53 ultra capacity uh 5g mm -hmm. on t-mobile nice that's nice seriously you, you, you can't yeah so find ways to enjoy it that's maybe the best way to say it, it just find ways to enjoy your content and your the oneplus conversation is still at the beginning of it it is the beginning of 2022 we only have one version. We know there is going to be other capa storage capacity. We have the Nord N20 coming up. You know, I um, and I was talking to Jermaine a couple of days uh, like earlier this morning too about you know the double standard that we get from comp you know from people reviewing device and say, well, the OnePlus is not good enough. Maybe you should just go buy an S22, but it's better. Kind of conversation. Like, how much of a lazy approach to reviewing do you want to get? Where you're like. You don't even spend the time with the camera or the device um, and, and just passively just, you know, say that, you know, yeah, just go get one of these guys because these guys are, you know, they're the best. You know, the, this is Android, uh, you know, the de facto Android. So, um, yeah, it, it, it's frustrating. Uh, but I, I it, you, we need to do better. We need to do better to educate people. But yeah. Um, People need I, I to think, do better I before think, they try to do something like that. But yeah. Well, I, I, but I get, again, I think like consumers who really care about how they're spending their cash, they aren't listening to techies right now. I feel like a part of that's already being accomplished. What we need to do is now kind of get people excited about trying new things. Yeah. Um, in, instead of it just being the, you know, hey, you're going to walk in, you're going to see a Samsung at your carrier store, and that's what they're really going to try and push on you for an Android device. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, on us to do a better job of like, well, what do you do with your phone? Oh, did you know this phone is gonna tackle that kind of use really well? And then seeing if you could get someone to, to consider, you know, like, oh, well, if this is like the thing that I really wanna try and do, there's a solution for that. Not just, well, I keep buying from the same company and then I keep doing the same things with my phone and I can't really grow because I'm kind of maxed in what that one company is already accomplishing for me. Um, it, it, it's tricky because it's all wrapped up in psychology and marketing and is it a flex or do I, am I going to be able to show off to people that I spent a lot of money on my phone? There's all of that, that kind of gets weighed in there also. Yeah. Um, but, but right now it's, it's genuinely been fun. I mean, like, like we, like I said, when, when I was over at your place and we were streaming off of the tab. <laughs> um, was, it was a tablet. I mean, it's a yeah. Samsung, don't get me wrong. It's but, Samsung but no, it's really getting something done. Is, I, I've is. been showing people these videos that I'm shooting of Lex lately. Like she had the school optical course. We went to the Huntington Gardens. Mm -hmm. And, and in like, as soon as you see one quarter slow motion in full 4K with that kind of depth of field coming from a larger sensor smartphone, it's, that looks cinematic from a phone. Like that's, that's what we're kind of primed to think you know, higher quality video, cinematic video is supposed to look like. There was this one part of the obstacle course where the kids had to run under and through these like tunnel, these little mm -hmm. short oh, yeah. tunnel yeah. things. And I caught it in, 
you're like all of these kids kind of coming out the exit of these little mini tunnels and like Lex kind of like steps through and she's kind of got like this look on her face. It's, it's one quarter speed. The, the detail and the clarity as her hair is kind of like blowing back because it was all in her face because she was going through the tunnel. And, and like she kind of like she even like kind of puffs out her chest because there's a boy that had just fallen right in front of her and she's got to kind of walk around him. It looks like something out of like some crazy dystopian Guardians action of the film. I, I was thinking like Guardians, or like of, the Guardians of the Galaxy, Galaxy kind of a thing. <laughs> Gamora like, coming I said out it, and she's like, let me kick you. <laughs> yeah. I, I said it to Daft Punk, so I can't even share the video publicly if I wanted to because that would be a copyright strike immediately. But like that's what I sent to my family and like. I can see how many times that video has been watched on OneDrive and like it's getting multiple views. So it's that kind of stuff where it's like if you're not trying, if you're not doing anything like that, then you don't even really know what it is that you're missing. And, and when a camera reviewer is just like, oh, but uh, I can shoot better slow motion because it's 240 frames per second. And you're like, yeah, but it's kind of garbage. 1080p at best and and like you you really don't know how much better this is until you try it and and that's what i i, I hope to kind of get more people excited about you pick up a sony there are things that you're going to do with it that genuinely can't be accomplished anywhere else if you pick up a note 22 it's all about s pen and dex if you pick yep. up a Moto, it's all about Ready 4. If you pick up a OnePlus, it's about some of these really unique uh, camera capabilities, even if it's not necessarily the most pro camera. If you pick up a Vivo, then you're going to get all the rest of the pro camera stuff. X74 I mean, again, Plus, my friend. Yep. All, all of these little flavors were completely missing, all of those little flavors. And, and that's, that's what's kind of bumming me out. I, I, we went to the aquarium, we went to the, the Albuquerque Botanical, the biopark. Mm -hmm. um, it was my mom's birthday. Nice. We were just kind of just shooting just normal stuff. And, and then you go back and you look at the footage and you're like, man, just like a wacky photo of a jellyfish. And you're like, that came out so good. <laughs> that photo came out so good. Um, for anyone who's sitting there going, oh, I don't know, one plus in their cameras. I immediately have to, like, that person's an idiot. Like, they're just genuinely so bad at photography that they're making the phone take bad pictures at this point because yeah. we're, just, we're, we're just flush with awesome options. They just all have their own flavor. They're all just a little different. And that, that yeah. should be exciting to techies, not, not you know, the, the, the sort of, like, whole feeding home. The, feeding, yeah, feeding the SEO what the SEO needs because that's right, the, right, right, right. the way to get more views and, and more clicks. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, and, and it is, at this point, kind of like a unique experience for basically, you know, OnePlus and Sony that if they get the 4K 120. Um, and I'm hoping to see more devices hopefully adopt this because the weird part is I, I, I would have loved Oppo to even adopt that function over, but they kept that specific kind of like where Oppo has specific functionality. Like Oppo doesn't do 8K on their devices, but OnePlus does. Uh, and yeah. OnePlus does the 4K 120. So there are still some unique things you can kind of point to specific f features that each company is keeping to their, you know, as their own identifying identification kind of a functionality. Um, I did get the glass protector for the OnePlus 10 Pro, and I'm going to be installing it on the, my Find X5 Pro nice. as well. So that'll which, be- which, which one did you, did the, is it the Don't, OnePlus? Oh, the, the OnePlus the 10 Stone. Pro. Yeah, I, I need that. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna put it in order for it just because like well first of all the one the, the the Whitestone folks have been so kind in kind of helping me through my impatience <laughs> in setting up their own products, um, but I really do need to uh, to just grab um, it, it's, one for it is I, I the One Plus Ten Pro is gonna be one of those phones where I think I'm gonna be spending a little bit more time with my SIM card and, in and it, you do want to have that protection on it yeah because uh, yeah. uh, the one that we have, that, that screen protector, unfortunately, does not does not do much for protecting it from falls or anything like that. Um, so with that being said, I think we're, we're almost at that magical, uh, you know, uh, timing of, of the day. Um, it didn't, it wasn't a very busy week for us, a lot of things that we are able to talk about right now. I promise you there's going to be some exciting content coming out um, in, the next, in, the, in the next few weeks and months and so on. Uh, Juan and I are talking about some collaboration also that will will also push some of the level of collaborations that we've worked with uh, together before. So something new from both of us um, and, and trying to maybe uh, work on providing a better uh, unified approach to certain things so that hopefully we'll be able to enjoy some of that. And um, 
you know he's playing with the uh, the uh, the Red Magic Seven uh, Seven Pro, so mm -hmm. uh, we need to kind of figure out some good content for gaming uh, experience. Because I sold my Seven, uh, but you know that doesn't mean we don't have other devices that we can play some from very good gaming experiences on. Um, I'm going to try to have a show this week. I may end up having a show tomorrow morning. I'm going to see how things go with my day job. Because Saturday, unfortunately, we have another swim meet with my son. and Saturday, Sunday. So I won't be able to okay. have my normal timing show. So if I don't make that, um, we'll have to find something. I'll, I'll let you guys know tomorrow morning uh, how things go. I'll, I'll need to see how day stuff kind of goes up. But um, hopefully... If you guys, if we don't meet up, meet up again, meet up this weekend for that. We'll see each other again on the Monday morning of the SGQA with Juan on his channel for the nine o'clock. Hopefully, the show will be back, right? Normal on, on yeah, your side. Yeah, it should be back. As as yeah. far as I know, unless some something goes bork, um, we should be good to go. Because that should that. be also the the pajamas episode, isn't it? Or is there yes, one more? Yes, last. Uh, wait a minute. That's very good. question. Yeah, it's the last Monday, and I didn't Monday. get to do a pajama podcast last month, so I really want to do it this month. Yes. So, um, so not, I, I, as as we wrap all this up, I would like to show I did a special cut down version of the Huntington Gardens video where Lex is mostly in a mask. Okay. So I have to turn off the music because it's um, well, we're not uh, monetized, so it's not like we're going to get yeah. demonetized. <laughs> well, no, I just don't even want the copyright. <laughs> no, I know. Um, strike on our podcast if we can help it. So let me uh, let me screen share here, and we can kind of go out on Lex playing. Is it on your screen, or are you screen sharing it as a separate screen? Oh, here. Um, no, I'm Oops, gonna I'm gonna share it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right there. <laughs> And so, uh, so we'll wrap this all up. Everybody, thanks so much for tuning in, uh, for for sharing and subscribing and spreading the word. And we've got so much stuff coming out; it's not even funny. So now, here is 4K footage from the OnePlus 10 Pro as I'm running around with my daughter. Just imagine Cat Stevens playing in the background, and you'll get a sense of the vibe that went down on this video. And let it buffer. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's down in like, you can see the individual <laughs> little grains of that magnetic sand. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, dude. No, seriously. Now this, this, this next shot is the one that, that lights me up. Boom, look at that. Oh, all those oh. little water droplets are spot yeah, yeah. on. Oh, yeah, it's so yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Oh, look at that. She, she obviously is, she's absolutely enjoying that trip, which is, it's always the fun time as a, as any parent, you take your kids sure. anywhere, the moment they're having fun, they're enjoying it. it you just look at the color, look at the dynamic range, man. Look at that. <laughs> She's playing marbles, the real game. Roger should right? know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then she, she heard us talking about her, so she made a wacky face just as we were walking out. Again, it's, just, it, it's, it's awesome. It, it is. It is, absolutely. So, oh, man. The memories. The memories captured in 4K. That's the best way to do it. Um, so, so good. With that being said, I hope you guys are doing well. Stay safe, be safe, enjoy your tech, and we'll see you guys hopefully next week for another episode of the best of our week. Uh, and of course, thank you very much, everybody, Aditya, Barry Johnson, Michael, um, um, Anna, uh, and then of course, uh, Michael, I think Farhan is in there as well. I didn't get a chance to say hi. We, we had we had a great crew. This we is had, like yeah. the, the most concurrent people we've had watching in a while. Absolutely. So really, thank you to everybody. We were reading through chat and stuff, even though I know we're not always you know responding directly. But th thank you, everybody, so much for watching. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll catch you back next week. Take care, everybody.